Hi everybody, uh, just another quick update. I've um, made a bit more progress on these Aventine Romans. Uh, a lot happier with how these turned out now, the bases. Um, don't look anything like as busy as my previous attempt, which was those. Basically on the last set, I've got too many cork bits in the mix there and this has made too many rocks it's just made the sort of bases look too rocky and too too full but um yeah i mixed up a load of new stuff got several sets of things from um serious play mostly and uh some other static grass i can't remember who's from actually but yeah, it's basically a mix of static grass and stuff from serious play. And uh, yeah, this um, these bases come out a lot better. Quite happy with them now. Just a quick close up. Actually, this one at the back, they're not finished yet. Uh, but this one at the back is an example of a completed base. All the shields and everything on. Well, basically the mix of stuff there with a load of tufts just stuck on in different areas. Turn around the back. So I'll just put them down at the front for the minute. coming out so yeah much much happier than the last lot so I quite like there's not too much on there it's fairly bright I mean I wanted it to look because it's all based in Britannia I sort of thought I'd go for the green pleasant land sort of look and um, yeah I'm happy with how they come out here's a close-up of command base And this banner here, it's a um, little big men studios transfer on the front there. It's come out quite nice, that. I like the uh, guys in the bear skins, the corner turn and the standard bearer signifier. They look good. But, not not talking about my painting, talking about the sculpts, they're really nice figures. That's one command stand, I won't bother showing the guys at the back, they're just really standard troopers, here's the other one, command. Standard keeps getting bent there, keep because it's so bloody tall. I keep every time I reach over for something, I knock it. I'm just waiting for it to snap off. Watch it; it'll do it now. Okay, this time, but I think that's literally hanging by a thread now. I've dropped it, bloody say, so banged it with my arm, no end of time, bent the thing right over. I'm amazed it's still on. So when it does come off, I think I'm gonna have to. Try and stick a bit of wire through the middle of it, I think. But yeah, I like the uh, little signifiers, the outfit they got, the bare skin, and they seem to, from the pictures I've seen, they all had a kind of goldish coloured scale and chainmail. So I think the idea was that they're meant to stand out from all the other troops so that if there was any trouble, they'd be uh, the rest of the troops would be able to find them if they were like on to rally and then. Um, Obviously, they always had to protect the standard bearers as well. So, <laughs> yeah, that's those done then. Just got to finish the bases off now. Um, so, that's my first unit of Aventines. Very nice figures, too. 
I've got quite a few, I've got another th three to do now, another three sets of theirs. I've got um, some archers, I've got some guys with gladius and some guys with, um, what have I got? I think I've got one regiment and it's just they're all swords and then I've got another regiment where they're all mixed armours like chainmail, um, it's lorica segmenter, segmentata I think it was, and um, scale mail so they look quite good, uh, you know, a good mix, something different. Just put these down out of the way. And anyone who's been watching my videos and noticed that these bits and bobs in the background might have seen on previous videos. Amongst them were some Warlord plastic World War II Russians, which I'd assembled because I was uh, I was going to start on the Russians and then, then I started having a big clear away, tidying away, um, putting stuff in the garage, getting ready for an eventual move which seems to be taking forever and keeps having setbacks. But um, yeah, I put all my World War II stuff away. But I, because I'd assembled these Russians, I kept the a set of Russian, uh, Russian box set out. So I've got that in this room, just up on the bookshelf. But as they were assembled, and I've just finished those Amantines, and I've been watching people's videos, seeing lots of World War II stuff, it was reminding me just how much I like painting World War II, so I thought I'd get on and paint these ones I've got assembled. Still a few at the back there I've got to do. Uh, the sort of officer, uh, like machine gunner. Now, if someone could tell me, actually, before I look too much into these figures I painted this chap got the machine gun the only way I could pose it to be for me to hold it was his right his left hand holding it by the um, drum now, and there's no handle on the machine gun which I thought was odd because I was expecting them to be a bit like the old um, gangsters Tommy guns when they had a wooden handle on them I mean, is that right? Any of you experts out there? I mean, someone like Sarge, he'll know because he uh, knows all about weapons and guns and stuff. Did they actually hold it like that? It just seems a bit. I don't know. It doesn't seem right that they'd hold a machine gun by the drum there. Well, I'll be interested to know, but you know, there's no handle on this model, and that is the only way he could his arm would actually fit onto the machine gun there's nothing else could hold it by I just thought it seemed a bit odd I mean maybe it's right I don't know should look into it myself but you know a bit lazy someone like Sarge would be able to tell me what's what's what there uh, yeah and then there's the light machine gunner um, I always put them as you can see I always put a bit of base on these plastic ones I mean I like uh, like with the metal figures you'll get like an integral base <laughs> on plastic figures <clears throat> I like to put something underneath them because I feel that otherwise all your basic material is just gonna like come up you know around the knees and the feet and that so I always put a bit of a base on them so I can just build up to it with the uh, Milliput. Milliput is what I've been using mostly because it gives a nice texture actually. Um, you don't really need to, I mean you could just do Milliput and you wouldn't need to do anything else. You could just paint them like that because it comes up in a nice sort of uh, earth, but sort of rubbly uh, ground texture when you just scrape it around a bit. But yeah, so I always put a little base on them. So here's a machine gunner to go with this chap here in the cap. But anyway. They're what I've done so far, say so Warlord Plastics. I think they're really nice figures. I was well impressed with them actually. Um, focus a bit better. As you can see I've gone for a mix of the sort of older green uniforms and the more sort of later tan ones, but I mean, you know, Russians. There were that many of them and they had 
such shortages of everything that I imagine that they'd, they'd all be in a mix of stuff. And I did, I do like the actual green uniform look anyway. So uh, I've pretty much gone for the ones with these padded jackets, which I've forgotten the name of. Um, I've done all those in the sort of tan colour. And then the guys in the more plain, I've gone for green. Yeah, I really like them. Uh, I think I'm going to... I've been trying not to get distracted from the Romans, but I've now got a massive hankering to do a load of World War II Russians now. Um, it's going to be hard to resist, because I've got the box there. The thing is, everything else is packed away. I've only got that one box out. I'm going to have a look in the garage and see if they are accessible, but I think I shove them right at the back. So. I would like now to get all the Russian stuff out and the Russian army to go with or against my German Grenadiers. And I need to do some vehicles. I've only done like two vehicles so far and one I wasn't happy with. So I really do need to do a bit more in that aspect. But yeah. Like these. I uh, really do like these. Um let's get a pointer of some sort. Bring this guy up. Right, these, uh, where are we? There, the bricks. I basically got um, this basin material. Basically, it's the, it's um, all this is milliput, and then scatter stuff you can see is um, Jarvis. Uh, I think it's called Urban Scatter. But those bricks are actually some uh, resin bricks that I found, 148 scale resin bricks. Um, get the pack. These. Where are we? Yeah, these. Footpath. Realistic model scenery. Uh, you get 250 in a bag. I can't remember how much they were. I don't know, three or four quid. Um, and I got them from them, Model Scenery Supplies. I'm well impressed with them. They, sort of, I think they look really good on the base. Uh, yeah, I just painted it. I basically glued them in amongst the rubble so that you know, it didn't look too, looked a bit more natural. But I was a bit concerned about the look of the bases actually, again, because I always am. I thought maybe this scatter looked a bit too big and chunky for, for the scale, but I wanted these to be kind of urban, you know, Leningrad, Stalingrad type of thing, and, you know, the rubble there is going to be big chunks of all sorts of, you know, buildings lying around, so I think it probably looks alright, to be honest. Uh, I'll just do a quick close-up of each one. There, that's the green, green uniforms, which I used uh, Russian uh, Vallejo, Russian green, uh, Russian uniform for that, and the helmet is uh, Russian green. Um, the bed rolls, I think I did the same colour as these jackets, and for that I used um, US field drab. Yeah, so for the green coats it was that, green uniforms it was the old Russian green, the helmets were, sorry, uh, Russian uniform for the outfits, Russian green for the helmets and any sort of things like the ammo boxes and things, grenades. Um, yeah, the tan sort of uniforms I used US Field Drab. I went by um, the same guide I've been using for most of my World War II stuff at Artisan. If you go to their website, you know, their, um, yeah, go to the website, like the, the shop online shop. There's a tab at the top of I think it's called articles and um, or guides. 
And basically they've got guides for pretty much well most all the main forces of World War II. I mean don't want to be disparaging saying main, I mean there's no no inch of Polish and or Czech and all that and they played a big part, but you know what I mean, it's got all the German, Russian, British, American, Japanese, uh, and then it's got the the sub sort of factions of those like Airborne, um SS, it's got all the camo patterns and everything, they're really good. Um I really like them. I pretty much use those all the time now. Um yeah, and they basically gave you the the colour guides for the green and the tan uniforms. Uh where was this chap? With the great coats rolled over. I mean for that great coat I used um what was it now? No, can't find the bloody thing. Oh, I can't find it. It was another US colour. Hang on, I'm just going to find that. I know it's up here somewhere. Ah, found it. Yeah, for that great coat on. I wanted it to be a bit more contrasty than for them I just used the tan colour on the green uniforms so I wanted that bit more contrast used US olive drab for that which I think I'll use for when I do my American troops that I've got great coats I'll use that colour for them because I think they that was the colour they had Right, yeah, so this guy, I wasn't actually too keen on this one, didn't like the pose the way it turned out, um, and because I wasn't too happy with him I thought I'll use him as the assistant gunner, uh, to go with the LMG, yeah, I wasn't, something about that pose I wasn't very keen on, so I thought yeah, he can just be the gunner's mate, I like this pose, this is a good one, sort of running, Again, I've, I've, half of them I've got the bricks on and uh, half I didn't bother, but... The guy in the tan uniform. And uh, one more kneeling. So that's those. Like the first Russians I've ever painted. Enjoyed them, and uh, like I say, now I'm really keen to get on with them. Um, I'm gonna have to have a look for them. I mean, I, I am enjoying these Romans, but I've sort of realised how much I like painting World War Two, which very strange for me cause, because when I started the historical side of um, miniature painting, I always imagined I'd be painting. Well, Romans, ancient stuff mostly, because that's what I was always into as a kid. So I imagine I'd be doing that kind of thing, and that that would be my main interest: Romans and Napoleonics, because I always like the look of the, the uniforms. But I'm not painting any Napoleonics, and um, I've only done these couple of bases of Romans so far. And I mean, yeah, like I say, I ended up somehow. Uh, I think it must have been just because bolt action was uh, popular. I don't know what it was. Uh, I remember buying bolt action and a sort of starter army and I sort of went mental on World War Two after that. Um Yeah, and I keep seeing people's videos thinking, hmm, you know, I do miss doing that. So I think I'm gonna I shouldn't, but I think I'm gonna press on with these Russians now. Um and see if I can find get to my other stuff. If not, I shall get back on these Romans and Britons. That's a problem though, isn't it? You, you end up... Well, as some people don't. I mean, I've, I'm one of these people who just can't seem to stick to anything. I admire people that can just stick with one thing. You know, like Chris Waring. He 
just bangs out the Napoleonic stuff and um, gets through them, gets armies completed. Ralph Astley, he's just done what? But he did something stupid like 400 Zulus. <laughs> Couldn't imagine doing that. But um, I'd love to, uh, but I just can never seem to stick to anything for, for too long. But anyway, um, yeah, I picked up a couple of more subscribers past week or two. I can't remember the names off the top of my head. I meant to write them down, but you'll know who you are, and thanks very much for subscribing. Um, and the same goes to everybody else who does subscribe. Thanks very much. Thanks for watching and commenting. And, uh, well, yeah, see you again soon. Um, take care, everybody. Bye.